Good morning, everyone. If you see me shivering this morning, it's because of English. <laughs> I don't have a, English is a beautiful language, but somehow when I stand in front of people to share English, some, somehow I just get a bit uh, nervous. So um, forgive me if all the words don't come out 100%. So it's, this morning it's an honor for me to share the word as a family member in Christ, because we are family in Christ. Amen. And it's uh, really... Uh, a great pleasure to see, see such a beautiful amount of faces in front of me this morning because this morning I really have something very important that each one sitting here today really need to know and really need to make part of their lives. But before I start, I'd like for us to just close our, our eyes and then I'm going to pray for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we just want to thank you so much for what you have done for us. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you that your word is the light for our lives. And Father, I pray for this service this morning, that you will bless every word and that your spirit will work in the hearts of each and every person sitting here this morning. Because we know for sure, Father, that you love each one of us so much. In the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray this. Amen. This morning, I want to start with scripture reading. So for you that have your Bibles with you, you can just uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians uh, 1. I'm going to read for us 1 Corinthians 1 from verse 17 to verse 24. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 17 to verse 24. I just want you this morning, I just want to ask you that I know that maybe at home there might be some trouble or problems or at work or at school for the children. Oh, you're not at school, you're on holiday, so there's not much problem for the children. But this morning I ask of you just to keep your attention to the Word of God this morning because really it will mean so much for you going forward. Because the Lord wants to bless, bless each one of us. And uh, everyone sitting here, you know that God loves you so much that even if only you were on earth, He would have gone to the cross for you. Do you know that? He loves you so intimately, you will never, never, ever in your whole life, with your whole being, understand the love He has got for, for, for you sitting there, each one of you. So let us start 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17. I'm going to read up to um, verse number 24. It starts with the following. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of elo uh, eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Then I just want to um, uh, uh, read verses 1 and 2 of chapter 2. This is now Paul speaking. You, I'm sure that everyone sitting here knows about Paul. And I, when I come to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. Now yet, here verse 2. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and, and Him crucified. And Him crucified. So let me tell you, for those, just to, I know that all of you know this information, I'm just going to highlight it again to you. This man, Paul, in Acts 9, if you go and read, he was on his way to Damascus. 
And on his way there, he had a supernatural experience with God. He was, there was a bright light that covered everything. And you know what? After that supernatural experience that he had, for three days, he was, I don't want to say the word zombie, but he, he was idle. He just sat there in a chair. He didn't eat anything. He didn't drink anything, and nor did he say anything. That's how big this supernatural uh, experience that Paul had, the effect that it had. But he just sat there for three days. But now I want to tell you something very interesting. If you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says that he knows of a man that was taken into heaven. He says, if it was me, I do not know. But it was him. So he was taken into heaven. Now I just want to read this to you. You mustn't close your Bibles. I'm going to refer a lot back to uh, the verses that we have read. So let me just read this in uh, chapter 2 in 1 Corinthians. Uh, it's verse 9. But as it is written, this is now about heaven. Paul was taken into heaven, eh? the third heaven. What no eye has seen nor ear heard nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Can you think of what is in heaven? In heaven is the supernatural, things that didn't come up in the minds or either in the imagination of a man. So Paul was there and he should have seen all these things. And you know what? When he came back, you know what he said? He said, I I decided to know nothing else except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Can you see what God want, wants us to hear this morning? That Paul says, Paul who, that, who was in heaven, comes back and he says, I, I, I decided to know nothing else except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That should tell us something, that nothing else in this world, world matters as much as the crucifixion, as the price that Jesus Christ has paid for each and everyone sitting here this morning. Can you take it this morning, dear Gloria, that Jesus Christ paid the full price for you? And you know, if you go and read in verse 18, let me read it for you. Verse 18, I just want to... Um, uh, reiterate it for you. For the, for, the, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. In other words, the Jews, they mocked Jesus Christ. For the whole world, when they see this king hanging on the cross, it was folly for them. But for us, who are children of God, for us, it must be the power of God in our lives. I'm asking you this morning, is the crucifixion the power of God in your lives this morning? My question to you this morning, and I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. The first one is, are you in Christ? And if you do not, if you do not know what it means to be in Christ, if you do not know what it means to be at the cross, I'm going to tell you this morning. I'm going to uh, guide you through the word to show you. You know what? When, the, when God looked at the world, He saw a broken world. He saw a world full of illnesses. He saw a, wo a world full of uh, problems and crises. And everything, was in, everything is just problems everywhere you look. You know what? And then God Almighty said, I've got a perfect plan. And that is the title of my message this morning. God's perfect plan. You know, there's a scripture that says in uh, Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, that says that God's, God's thoughts are not our thoughts, and His ways is not our ways. In verse 9 it says, As far as the, the heaven is above the earth, as far is His thoughts and His ways above our ways. Now, do you think that this sovereign God, this God, that wisdom is with Him? That He will give a plan for the world, and it's only a partial plan. It is a perfect plan. 
It covers everything. So there where you sit this morning, it doesn't matter what you have done in your life. Not one sin is too great for the cross. Nothing you have done can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. You just have to make the decision this morning. The same as Paul, where he decided that the cross, the crucifixion, is everything. I'm, I'm reading from the ESV this morning. This word must be your most important possession in life. If you cannot tell me this morning that your word, the Bible that you have with you or on your cell phones, if that's not your most important possession, I'm not talking about the cell phone, eh? I'm talking about the Bible on the cell phone. If that's not your most important possession, you have to go and do inspection in yourself and make sure that you're in right standing with God. Because you know what? God gave a perfect plan for all of you sitting here and myself. All he asks is he wants your whole life. It's a life for a life. It's a fair deal, ne? A life for a life. So what I want to say this morning, for the world, they will not realize what happened on the cross. But you have to know that the cross is all the answers that you need in your life. Because of the crucifixion, you have got all the answers in life. And you have to know, because of the cross, you experience the grace you experienced this morning. This lady just gave us a beautiful testimony here. And it's not, uh, what's the English word for to fall? It's not by accident that it happened. It's by the grace of God. And when we are in Christ, we know it's not by accident that it happened. It's by the grace of God. Everything that you experience when you woke up this morning was the grace of God. And it was because what happened 2,000 years ago on the cross. Everything starts at the cross. Paul comes back from heaven and it's all about the cross. Nothing else. The cross should be your focus all days of your life. And like I said this morning, I want to show you how to live in the fullness of what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. Because will you agree with me if I say this morning that sometimes you look at people and you see, but they are Christians, if I can call it that. Many people don't like to do it, or they are children of God. But they do not experience the fullness of God. Am I right if I'm saying that? So why is this then? We are going to look at the, the answer this morning. Why is it that not everyone are experiencing the fullness of what Christ has done for us on the cross? Okay, so let's go. Um, the answer starts with being in Christ. Being in Christ. You know, why I'm saying it's so important and why I refer to the word gives us the answer. 89 times in scripture in the New Testament, there's this, uh, these two words, in Christ. You can, can go and count it. 89 times. So this should be important, to be in Christ. And I want to tell you, if you go and do a little bit of research, in those years, if you said that someone was in someone, it means that they were like this. They were like battery and torch. Ne? Uh, I know the previous place where I worked, there was this guy, his name was Fenter. And every, everywhere he went, this other guy was with him. So we called him Fenter and Trailer. So Fenter and Trailer. So they were like this. If you saw the one coming around the corner, you know the other one is following. That is when you, that is in those years when you say that um, Paul is in, in Craig. It means like they were this, they were like this. Now what does it tell us, tell us if scripture says that we have to be in Christ? We have to be in Christ. In other words, the way he thinks, I think. The way, his ways is my ways. What he doesn't like, I don't like. What he likes, I like. Does that make sense to you? So to be in Christ, you have to think like you think. You have to do like you do. 
You have to like like he do. You have to dislike what he dislikes. That's to be in Christ. And this is so important that you grasp this today. And how can you be in Christ if you're not in his word? If you want to know how Christ thinks, you have to go and read in his word. If you want to know what Christ do not like, you have to go and find it in his word. In other words, when people see you, you don't even have to say a word. They have to see there's, a, there's someone that's in Christ. Not a Christian, there's someone that's in Christ. Uh, my brother that passed away, uh, many years he told me a funny story. He was at work and uh, he was working at this specific department for nearly three years. And this one day, he was in, in, the, in the Air Force, he was a colonel. So this one day, the secretary ran into his office. And she saw he was busy with the Bible and making notes on his board. And she says, oh, Colonel, I didn't know you were a Christian. He said, right there, he knew he did something wrong. You cannot just speak the word. You have to lift the word. Okay, that is when you are in Christ. When you are in Christ, then you're at the cross. Because then you realize the importance of what happened there that day. Uh, this morning when we sang that uh, one praise song, uh, we sang, it's your plan. His plan is the perfect plan. And his plan happened 2,000 years ago with his son, Jesus Christ, that died for you and for me, each one for, uh, of us. And you know what? The cross wasn't just the answer for the sin problem. Yes, it is the answer for the sin problem. But it's also an answer for your healing today. So I'm asking you today, child of God, you are, who are in Christ, is there any problem or any crisis that you might have in your life that cannot be solved? Is there? Everything, if we go and lay it at the cross, but you have to be in Christ. You have to be in His Word. Then I can tell you, you know antibiotics. Do you know how antibiotics work? If you drink that first, anti if you're not feeling very well, you, um, I, I had it this week. I had a super bug that visited me this week as well. If you drink that first antibiotics, uh, do you, are you directly uh, healed? It takes some time. It takes some time. Progressively, you're feeling better. Am I right, or is it only me? Uh, it's just, it's just me. Oh, you as well. Okay. So, the same with the Word. You cannot, you get people that uh, say, yeah, I, I've been in the Word for three weeks now, for a month. I'm at the Lord's feet and nothing happens. I want to tell you, progressively, as you're in the Word, day in and day out, progressively you will feel, feel you will experience the victory that He has for you. You will live it. And when a crisis comes, when a challenge comes, I will tell you, you will go through it like you will never believe it. You will, go, you will grow stronger and stronger and stronger because you are in Christ. When you're in Christ, you're at the cross. Paul says he's got nothing else. He decided nothing else to know but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Child of God, I want in this week, going forward, go and highlight this 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. And have the same attitude that Paul has. And you live this in your life. And I can promise you, I'll put my salary on it. That you will live, in, uh, uh, you will live a victorious life like you have never lived in your life before. But you have to be in Christ. You have to be in Christ. Your most important thing in life should be your word. To stay in this word of what the Lord has given us. Being in the word, being a repentant person. Do I say it right? No, bekeerde, no. Being a repentant person doesn't just mean I come to the Lord and I say, yes, Lord. You know, sometimes... Um, I'm not talking bad about churches. It's the person that's coming to the front. It's their choice. They play the nice music and the people come forward and they give their whole lives to Jesus Christ. Yes, it's very important. But then they run away. How do you think, and the, the scripture also uh, uh, compares it to a marriage. How do you think it will feel for a guy if he comes to this 
this girl of his, and he says, um, me, uh, um, Susan, will you marry me? And she says, yes. His heart will be very glad. Nee. Now she runs away, and you don't see her for three weeks, or four weeks. Is that a marriage? No. A marriage is when she says yes, 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 and she wants to be with him the whole time, and she wants to know all of his ways the whole time. When you say yes to the Lord, you stay with the Lord. And that's why it's so important when you tell someone about Christ and they accept the Lord, it's important to tell them, but there's a responsibility from your side. You have to be in Christ. You have to be at the cross. That's the most important thing. And to be at the cross, you have to live in the Word. Day in, day out. Day in and day out. I want to read us some uh, more good news. You know that... Uh, the, the gospel means good news. Nee, this is the good news. Of, you know what's the good news? It's because of what happened at the cross. Everything comes back to the cross. Let's go to John. I want to read um, from John 17, verse 20 to 23. I want to read this to you. Okay, John 17, verse 20. I'm going to start. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Here Jesus Christ is praying for us. Do you know that? He's praying for us. Now, yet, verse 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. You are one with Christ when you are in Christ. You know, um, in Genesis 2, uh, God had a covenant with Abraham. You know that. We had all these animals that you had to cut in half, and there, there was a covenant made there that day. And I'm giving you great news now. And you know what that covenant said? God told Abram, everything that's yours is mine. God says that to Abram. Everything that belongs to you is now mine. But God also says that everything that's mine is now yours. That day when you made the decision, that most important decision to say, I'm in Christ. That day when you made that decision, I want to tell you, you have a new covenant with Christ. Remember, you're either in, in God or you're in this world. Remember that. But the day when you said, I'm in Christ, new covenant, everything that belongs to you belongs to Christ. If you are privileged to have a vehicle or a car standing outside, I want to tell you that car doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Christ. I want to tell you, your beautiful children, they don't belong to you. They belong to Christ. I see all these beautiful babies here this morning, all these beautiful little ones. I want to tell your parents, oh, I'm full of goosebumps now. Those children belong to God. And if they belong to God and they're in Christ, you don't have to worry one day. Not one day, because they're in the hand of the Most High Shoo, I'm full of goosebumps now. <laughs> I, I tell you, God loves the little ones so much. They belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. So nothing belongs to you. Everything belongs to Christ. But the good news is, everything that belongs to Christ this morning belongs to you. Everything that belongs to Him belongs to you. Do you need healing this morning? Is there anyone that needs healing this morning? I'm telling you, if you are, if you're too scared to, I'm telling you, you'll get your healing today. The healing is yours in Christ. You must take it today. Do not let the enemy come and tell you, but you did this and this and this and this. You tell the enemy, I'm in Christ. The healing belongs to me. By his stripes, I'm healed. Go and read it in uh, Isaiah 53. Go and proclaim it. By his stripes, I am healed. Anyone here that has got problems at work, I want to tell you, 
you will come out victorious. Everyone here that needs provision, I can tell you, God's hand is not too short to provide. You must just take it because you're in Christ. Don't let the enemy lie to you and telling you you do not deserve it. You deserve it because Christ has paid the price. Everything goes back to you are in Christ. Child of God, this morning I want to ask you, are you in Christ? Are you in His Word? Do you have an obsession with the Word of God? I want to encourage you this morning. If you do not have obsession with this Word, go and spend more time in the Word because I can guarantee you, I can promise you the mor- this morning, the more you read this Word, the more you will want to read it. It's really like that. And the less you read it, the less you want to read it. Go and think about it. Go and read the truth. The thing that's most important for you in your life is your word. Go and spend time in it so that you can lead and live the victorious life that Jesus Christ has made for you. It wasn't a cheap price. It was an expensive price. Paul that was in heaven and he saw all that supernatural things that didn't even come up in our imaginations. He comes back and he says, Christ and him alone has crucified. That's all he wants to know. All. Can you think how important it is for us today to be in Christ and when you're in Christ, you are aware of what he did for you on the cross 2,000 years ago. There's no other way. No, no, no other way. And the other good news is, go and read Romans 8 verse 1. It says, for those who are in Christ. For those who are in Christ. Say in Christ. For those that are in Christ, there is then no condemnation. How's that? Can you take that today, a child of God, or are you going to listen to the enemy? Take it this morning. For you that are in Christ, there is then no condemnation. In other words, one day you're going to stand in front of the throne, not condemned. You are going to receive your reward. And I'm going to close off now. I didn't have a lot to say this morning. I only want you to understand this morning. You have to be in Christ to live in victory. You have to be in Christ for all, everything in your life. I can promise you this morning, everything in your life. And you know what? I do not just say it because I worked out a nice little sermon for today. I can say it this morning because I experienced it in my own life. I experienced it in my own life. I wasn't a good person. I came from, uh, uh, I was brought up very well, but I, uh, after I, I went to the army and stuff, I became a very bad person. And God came and He saved me. And He took me from a low place and He put me up in a high place. Not because I'm good, because what He has done for me 2,000 years ago, that grace pulled me through to what I am today. And still today, I have lots of challenges, but I can go through it, not because of my competency or whatever you should call it, because of what He has done for me. I'm in trouble a lot of times, I can guarantee you. I mess up many times. And each time I go to the Lord, and I say, Lord, I'm in you. I know you will come through for me. And you know what? I go through all those challenges, and I come out stronger on the other side. And it's for you, for every one of us. He's not, um, Romans 2 verse 11. He, uh, he's not person. He, he doesn't favor a person. He loves everyone as much. Everyone. So just three things I'm telling you this morning or I'm asking you this morning that you have to do to be in Christ. Firstly, have an obsession with your word. Live in the word. Read the word. You know what? Even if you do not understand everything that you're reading that morning or that evening or that afternoon, read it, read it, read it, and the Lord will start opening up things for you that you will never believe. But the responsibility is with you. 
God is a gentleman. He will not force himself onto you. You have to make the decision that each morning, each afternoon, each evening, I'm going to be in his word and I'm going to read his word. If I understand everything, I will just carry on reading and I will guarantee you, you will experience a life of abundance that you will never believe. And this is not a prosperity message. Secondly, be known as a person of prayer. Be a prayer warrior. In the mornings when you read your word, when you close your word, you go into prayer in front of the Lord and you give that day to the Lord and you say thank you for whatever He has done for you the previous day and the entire year that He has done for you. I see everyone walked in here this morning with nice clothes, better dressed, dressed than me. But I'm telling you, it's the grace of God. I want to tell you, when you open your eyes, it's the grace of God. When you get in your vehicle and you stop safely at home or at your workplace, if you are privileged to have a work, and if you don't have a work, you will get one. It's the grace of God. But pray, you must be a pray, pray, a pray warrior. And thirdly, obedience. But you know what? Obedience in the Lord is easy when you're in the Word. Because the more you're in the Word, the more you will want to, to live out the Word. The more you are in Christ, the more you will want to do what Christ did. The more you, the more you read the Word, the more you will think how Christ thinks. The more you read the Word, the more you will like what Christ likes. The more you read the Word, the more you will dislike what Christ dislikes. Amen. Let's close our eyes and then I'll pray for us. Almighty God, this morning, we just want to thank you and praise you and honor you, Father, for your greatness and your goodness and your kindness. Thank you, Father, for your grace abundantly over our lives. Thank you, Father, that we can call out Abba Father this morning and know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, I pray for each one sitting here this morning, Father. I pray, Father, that they will lead a victorious life because they know what you have done for them and that the, the enemy will not blind them, Father, for what you have done. Father, that their eyes will be opened to what happened 2,000 years ago on the cross where you gave your only begotten love, your, your only begotten son, Father, who loved us so much so that we can sit here this morning and know that we are 100% saved by your grace. Father, I pray for each one here this morning. Father, I pray, and I pray your protection hand over them in this week. I pray, Father, that everything that they will touch will turn into success. Father, I pray for every little one here this morning, Father. I pray for their future. I pray, Father, that your hand of protection and abundance and wisdom and knowledge, everything will be with them all the days of their lives, Father. I pray that each parent sitting here this morning, Father, will know for sure that they do not have to worry one bit because their children are in your hands, Father. And Father, we just want to say thank you that you love us so much. You love us so much, Father, and we love you also so much, Father. We pray that you will guide us through this week. Be with us, Father. Make us conscious and aware of your love for us in this week, Father, constantly. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I hope that each one of you will have a blessed week and be just blessed abundantly. Amen.